It seems to me one of the virtues of economics is that it should help you answer a whole bunch of questions with the same theory. And I think that's what we could try to do here as well. If you look at uh, across countries, I mean, there's a very old idea. This goes back to Alexander Gershenkron about the advantage of backwardness. The advantage of backwardness is you could adopt technologies from other countries which, you know, had industrialized, uh, you know, before. So that idea goes back to the, like, 1950s. But uh, the evidence on that point was put together um, by Steve Parente and Ed Prescott. And what they looked at was doubling times. So... What do you mean by that? How long it takes me to double my... The exact uh, experiment is this. We take all the countries in the world, and you have to pick a, for your base a, a fairly modest level of per capita income. So when they did it, this was back in the 90s, I think they took like $2,000 per capita GDP, $1990. Look at the first year when a country gets to that level of GDP per capita, and then ask how many years does it take them to double? The first countries that reach that, you know, it's a pretty modest level by today's standards. Uh, the Netherlands, I think, was the first. England was in there pretty early. The US, U.S. is in there pretty early. But the doubling times were very long. So I think for the Netherlands, it was maybe 90 years. Uh, the countries that were early to get to that threshold, it took a long time to double. So more recently, if you look at countries that reached $2,000 much later, so now I can think about like the East Asian miracles or, you know, uh, more recently, uh, mainland China. And they double, you know, way, way faster. It, it, you know, five or 10 years to double. And then you ask like, how is that possible? So again, like to me, the only way it makes sense is to think about these just importing technologies from abroad. So, I mean, adapting them, investing in them. Gershon Krohn's idea that the advantage of industrializing later, you don't have to invent all the wheels yourself. Okay, so let's play that out a little bit from both sides. One is, I'm the Netherlands. I'm the first one to get to, get to $2,000 per person in real income. I want to go to 4000 Per our earlier discussion, absent an improvement in my technology, I'm not going to get there. Human Probably capital not. is not going to do it. Physical capital is not going to do it. I'm going to have to get there by getting more technology. There's nobody out there, presumably, who has substantially better technology than I do. Maybe in some areas, some people have better, and the and Netherlands has worse elsewhere. But we basically got to push the frontier of technology right. out. So Britain, Britain would be a really stellar example for this. So if you think about the Industrial Revolution, it kind of yeah. started in England. They, you know, and what drove it? Well, you know, the steam engine gets lots of attention, but there were lots of other innovations as well. You know, weaving technology, spinning technology, dyes, you know, all kinds of stuff. So it was just, um, you know, there were a huge amount, I mean, just documented, you know, people have written many, many books on just the, you know, the technical change uh, during that period. In the Netherlands, I don't know, they were, they were big traders. Improvements in boat building technology, navigation technology. Okay, so one limitation when I'm already near the frontier of high incomes, which would be the people who reach this level first, is that there just aren't a lot of low-hanging, there's not a lot of low-hanging fruit in terms of bringing in technology. I have to develop technology. Right, yeah, if you're on the frontier, as we say, technological advances, it's kind of a do-it-yourself uh, enterprise. There's nobody you can get a lot of uh, help from, so. Okay. Now, say I'm one of those guys who's pretty far behind the frontier. Mm -hmm. So even if there were no technical improvements in the universe at all, there's a bunch of technology I'm currently not using. Well, why don't I just, adopt the technology and 
I'm there. I'm, mm -hmm. So why don't mm -hmm. I get to the Netherlands super quickly? Because all I got to do is take this thing called technology. Please send me some <laughs> technology and whoop, I should get there, right? Yeah, it, it, it's sadly, it doesn't seem to work like that. If it, you know, if it did, I suppose the whole world would be rich. So countries that are behind the frontier, they can bring in technologies from outside, but somehow they have to adopt them and make them their own. So and this is where the human capital would be, you know, play, a, you know, a very important role is you, you can't take the, um, say the British uh, textile industry and start producing textiles using their methods of production unless you have you know, some of their engineering skills and other skills. So you need, you need the human capital to work with the new technology. Okay, and we also need the physical capital that goes with it. And you need the it. physical capital as well. I mean, that, take out a loan and buy it. So if it's gonna be that productive, I suppose you can find a lender and you can buy the equipment. But the human capital is a little, you know, you have to do that kind of on your own. Yeah, but isn't there also another side of it, which is I, I want to go open a factory in some place and let's assume they got the workers that can do it and I can buy the machines and bring them in. But it seems hard to do that really quickly and hard to do that in isolation that Mm -hmm. You know, what happens when my machine breaks? Right. Are there the people there that have fixed it? Are the, are the repair parts mile, you know, thousands yeah. of miles away? Or the repairman, yeah. Like and the repairman, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, it seems to me that it gets back to what we talked about before. Just like the new technologies that came in didn't immediately and in and of themselves get us the greater level of output, there was a lot of things that we had to do along with it, with the people yeah. and the machinery, and maybe not just the specific people and machinery that are in that factory, but a broader economic system that supports those things. And that yeah. slows down that whole convergence process. It has to be an issue in every developing country. I mean, you know, for all the bad press Nike factories get, I would say they've been, you know, just companies like Nike locating plants around the world, they've done a lot to raise incomes. I mean, just multinational company opens a production plant. Usually, I mean, there's a long line of people when they say they're gonna be hiring. We might say by US standards, their wages aren't very good, but by local standards, they're much better than the next best alternative. But then you think about where do multinationals locate their you know, their, their new factories. They have to think about things like, you know, in, I mean, here in Chicago, we take it for granted that when we turn the light switch, the light goes on. Not true everywhere in the world. Um, so you think about electricity, roads, you know, transportation. There's a lot of inf just physical infrastructure that, you know, if that is not up to some level, it, you know, it's going to be hard for a, a, a Western type factory to operate at all. Yeah, so there's, in terms of infrastructure, lots of investments that, you know, have to be at some level to, you know, to make, if you want to make your city in a, in a poor country a candidate for, you know, a investment from outside. Mm -hmm.